Good evening and welcome to the 29th annual Teacher of the Year ceremony here in the Prince George's County Public Schools. Tonight, as Birgit was saying, we're going to be choosing a candidate to vie for the title of Maryland Teacher of the Year, who, like last year's Maryland teacher, Sean McComb of Patapsco High School in Dundalk, could be going to the White House next year and emerge as the National Teacher of the Year. It should be noted that Sean was the third Maryland teacher chosen as national teacher since 2006, so Maryland has a good record. It is a, uh, a cool but beautiful evening. You all look wonderful, and Prince George's schools, like the Washington Capitals after they win tonight, are on a roll. <laughs> you know, back when this ceremony started in 1986, Laura, Pluto was still a planet. Yes. Web specialists were spiders. Watches just told time. Mm -hmm. And nobody used emojis, knew how to text, or thought a cloud was anything other than a puffy white thing up in the sky. Yep. You know, every year, like spring itself, there is a feeling of perpetual astonishment when we see so many talented teachers like you who have suddenly come to prominence after years and years of extraordinary work. Tonight, as Birgit was saying, we have 16 nominees, two of whom hail from the same school, Walker Mill. The Walker Mill table is right back there. And one, Valerie Dent of Surrattsville, has been nominated now for the second time. Right there, Valerie. And Laura, if there were a prize for the best centerpiece, Take a gander at the Surrattsville table. There is a saxophone and a piccolo there because Blue. Valerie is an accomplished musician and they did you well tonight, Valerie. Beautiful centerpiece there. Six of our nominees tonight are from elementary schools, three from middle schools, two are high school teachers, two from Montessori's, and one each from an academy, a special center, and a charter. And the range of experience is from seven years all the way up to 34. Wow. That would be Laura Koronowski. Laura, where are you? 34 years with us. And if you're sitting there trying to calculate your odds, if you're a nominee, thinking, could it be me tonight? Could it be me? Yes, it could be you. If your last or first name begins with a D, you got a good shot, because there are four of you tonight. And in the battle of the sexes, if you're a guy, sorry. <laughs> the odds are stacked against you. Just two good men, Steve and Chukaweka, against 14 good women. We have tonight nominees from as far away as Nigeria and Haiti, and as close as down the street. A number of our nominees come to us through the resident teacher program, including Steve Biller, where is Steve? Over there. Keisha Tate, another resident teacher. Keisha. Dana Olfus. And Chuck Nowarki, all four resident teachers. And we have four of our nominees who are national board certified. Renee Roth. All right, we're going to have to watch that table, Lara. Keep your eye on that Tulip Grove table. <laughs> Susan Holmes is also a National Board Certified. That's close. The meter still stays with Tulip Grove. Where's Erin Nauman? Okay. With her son Orion sitting right there. He's making no noise whatsoever. And Danielle Ritthaler, who is over there, the art teacher from Bowie. But what all of our nominees have in common is a passion and a skill for reaching out to young people and making those same youngsters believe in themselves. They are possessed, each one of you, of a natural genius, which author Doug Lemoff says is often deliberate technique in disguise. Mm -hmm. All of you are the teaching profession's royalty, and we are privileged to be in your company tonight. In reading over the nomination packets, 
which Laura and the rest of the roundtable and I have done, some of which ran to over 60 pages. Yes. 60 pages. Some of the best comments came from their students who expressed in their own inimitable ways just what they thought of their teachers. Here's a sampling. A six, an eight-year-old at John Hanson Montessori wrote that Laura Koronowski has a fun personality. But when she's serious, we know it. We get quiet and we pay attention. My mommy always says to me that I'm smart and very independent because of Mrs. Koronowski. I can tell that she really wants to be there and loves her job because one time she hurt her back and she still came to school. Wow. She was in a lot of pain, but she was there. I don't know that I would have done that <laughs> at eight years old. A young lady in Dana Olfus's class at Benjamin Tasker wrote that Dana made me feel comfortable in middle school as if somehow she understood how I was feeling every day. As for a reading teacher, she was the best. She improved my writing skills and taught me how to write a legitimately good essay. Before that, I didn't know really what good was. Nice job, Dana. And our last note, I like this one. Steve Biller, pay attention. This is about you. Geraldy Escobar, one of Steve Biller's students at Beacon Heights, wrote that Steve knows science really well. In fact, he knows everything there is to know. He's a really cool guy. Our class pet is a female bearded dragon. He lets us touch it and look at it whenever we want. None of the other teachers like bearded dragons, <laughs> except maybe Miss Fiola, but really not that much. <laughs> I can tell Mr. Biller is trying his best to teach us, and we love him for it. Nice sentiment, Steve. Nice sentiment. All right. To get us started here tonight, would everyone please rise for the presentation of colors by the Surrattsville High School Junior ROTC. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our thanks to the cadets from Surrettsville High School, Cadet White, Watkins, Tribbett, and Taft. Thank you all for giving up part of your night to be with us here. Well, now I'll get some remarks from our chair of the Board of Education and our invocation. We'll then be having dinner. Afterwards, we'll hear from a number of distinguished people, and then we will be calling all 16 of you up here individually and sharing details as Birgit said, we know all about you. <laughs> At this time, you know, if you don't know that our board chair, Sagoon Eubanks, is also the director of teacher quality for the National Education Association, the way he runs his meetings is a dead giveaway. If you ever watch him, engaging, jovial, well-informed, he's the kind of guy that if he were a teacher, whatever his subject, you just want to be in his class. He's that kind of guy. Would you please welcome Sagun Eubanks, Chairman of the Board of Education. Yep.
Good evening, friends and colleagues. What a wonderful day it is right here in Prince George's County. It is a day that we are great by choice right here in Prince George's County. Welcome to the 2015 Teacher of the Year celebration. It's such an honor uh, to welcome you on behalf of my colleagues, several of, of whom are here today. Uh, Lupe Grady, our, our, one of our new uh, board members, is here. Let's give her uh, an applause. My, my friend and, and partner in crime and vice chair, Carolyn Boston, is here with me this evening. And you'll be hearing from my friend and namesake, uh, Patricia Eubanks, in, in just a few minutes as she gives invocations. Uh, you know, folks who know me know that my, my staff have stopped giving me uh, comments and remarks a long time ago because I never read them. And so they stopped wasting their time. But when I did this, I was a little nervous with all these teachers in the room and all these great teachers about whether or not I should have written some things down to make sure that my grammar was going to be in order. Um, but, uh, but it is, you know, as, as I've spent the last couple of years visiting classrooms in Prince George County Public Schools. I've been amazed at your work for years. Since my son started kindergarten uh, uh, about 13 years ago, I have been amazed by the work of the teachers in Prince George's County Public Schools. I have been, I have laughed and cajoled and argued with silly misinformed people who don't have faith in the quality of our public schools and in the, in the dynamic uh, and engaging uh, and talented teachers that we offer our students every day. I know that the 16 of you here today are just a sampling of thousands of others who could be right here in this room right along with you. Now, my friend Dave Zern talked about the fact that you're now eligible to be nominated as the State Teacher of the Year and the National Teacher of the Year, and in my work, at the NEA, uh, I get the opportunity uh, in, in the work that I represent with one of the uh, co-sponsors uh, to go to the White House ceremony each year to celebrate the National Teacher of the Year. And while we mentioned that we've had three in the last seven or eight years uh, from Maryland, we haven't had any from Prince George's County yet. We're overdue. Yeah. We're overdue. So when I go to the White House in 2016, I expect someone from this room to be joining me. <laughs> In fact, I'll go one better, because like I said, I, you know, I, I manipulate myself. On Wednesday, April 29th, the 2014 Teacher of the Year, the current Teacher of the Year, is going to be recognized along with the 50 State Teachers of the Year uh, uh, on that morning at the White House. Tonight's winner is going to get a preview, because you'll join me at the White House on April 29th at the National Teacher of the Year ceremony. I'm getting ready to email my staff at NEA right now <laughs> to make sure that I hold that ticket for you. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you on behalf of the parents of Prince George's County Public Schools. Thank you on behalf of the children. This is going to be a great evening, and we look forward to, to the excitement of tonight's win, uh, winning teacher. Thank you very much. And before we begin our welcoming speeches here, before we bring you all up and start the selection process, are you all having a good time tonight? Isn't this room just terrific? This process started many, many months ago, and all of us on the committee would not have any clue as to what to do were it not for one person, and that is Birgit Brevard. You have seen her walking around here. She's got that beautiful yellow sash on, and she keeps us on target. She is fretting because we are off time right now. I said, Birgit, just relax. We're going to get through this. But Birgit, you are just the best, and thank you for making all this possible tonight. All right. Some of you may recognize our first speaker here. You know, when I was thinking about what to say about Darla, I was thinking about some of the most iconic things in Maryland. There is the Bay Bridge, 
There is the Blue Crab, there is the State House in Annapolis, and there is Darla Strauss. And I exaggerate just a little, because for over the past, for the past 20 years, there has been no better advocate for Maryland teachers than she. As the godmother of the Maryland Teacher, and Sp Teacher of the Year program, when Darla attends ceremonies like this, which she does all the times, Darla, you make it seem like the first time all the time. And when the winner's announced, watch her. No one claps louder, swells with more pride, or looks better than everyone else in the room when she does it. The Executive Director of Partnerships and Developments for the Maryland State Department of Education, Dr. Strauss coordinates Maryland's prestige competitions, including the Blue Ribbon Schools, the Milken Educators, the Teachers of Promise, which she started, and of course, the Teacher of the Year. Tonight's Prince George's winner, like those that have gone before him or her, will get the best den mother ever in Darla, expertly guiding them through a whirlwind year of meetings and trips and receptions. And all of you at the round table, you know that's true. Darla, make sure you do everything you're supposed to. For her zeal and commitment to education, Darla has been twice recognized by Baltimore's influential Warfield Daily Record as one of Maryland's top 100 women and has a long list of awards that testify to her great contributions to the teachers in the state. Darla, it's a good thing you're not on the ballot tonight because somehow I think you would win Teacher of the Year. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my friend and a great friend of Prince George's County, the ever elegant, always dynamic, Darla Strauss. Boy, David Zarin really knows how to make a girl feel great. <laughs> Let me tell you. Thank you so much. Um, and he's right. I am so thrilled to be here. Um, I, I think I wasn't able to make it last year, and I was very upset because I love, love, love the celebration and just think you are all doing the most amazing work. So from MSDE, from Dr. Lowry, who said hugs to all of you and congratulations. You are the best, applaud yourselves. <laughs> and for the Teachers of the Year, where are the, where's the table of Teachers of the Year? Where, there you are, it's true. Once you're a Teacher of the Year, it doesn't matter what you end up doing, you're always a Teacher of the Year, so. It's great to see all of you. And um, just want to let you know that Laura Shelton, who'll be back up here in a minute, is really doing a great job representing you. And even though she's amazing, and even though she is handing over the uh, crown to someone else tonight, she's still going to be working with us for quite a few months. We have a lot of activities that are still planned. Um, and I, I want to say, Again, my thank you to Birgit and the team. She is amazing, and the team has done a beautiful job. This is a fantastic celebration, and I do get a chance to run around the state, and this is one of the favorites. Don't tell the other districts I said it, but it is a favorite. Um, one other uh, commendation I do want to make is you have got an amazing, amazing superintendent of schools. Kevin Maxwell, you are all very, very blessed. You've got a terrific leader. Um, great county executive, I heard, who was running in the Boston Marathon. A f not only intelligent, great county executive, but a fit one, too. That's not so easy to find. Um, so I, I, I'm just thrilled to be here. And you know, there's a Latin proverb that I, I like to think about, and, I, and teachers of the year are always reiterating this proverb in many different ways. But the proverb is, by learning, you will teach, and by teaching, you will learn. And this um, proverb always comes to light when we talk to teachers of the year, because what they bring up uh, 
in their lives is the fact that they love the profession because they, it really is a profession of lifelong learning. And they talk often about learning even from their own students. Doesn't matter how old these kids are. But they learn from the students, which you know, may surprise people. We know the teachers are supposed to be teaching that students are learning, but the teachers say they learn as well every day from their students. And the very, very special part, I think, of the Maryland Teacher of the Year program and why I love it, and I'm so blessed to, to have the job that I have, is that we end up with a cohort of amazing teachers. It can be any one of you who are out in the audience who become the Prince George's County Teacher of the Year. <clears throat> and all the collaboration and mingling of the teachers from district to district to district, we become <clears throat> the most amazing group. Travel all over the state, almost every single month there's an activity. And what's really terrific is all the teachers bond and really love one another. I mean, what a, what a fantastic opportunity where you're able to bond with other wonderful teachers, share what you do, learn all the time, no matter what we're doing, um, have this electric environment when all the teachers of the year come together. So it's a fabulous opportunity. And for the one who'll be the Prince George's County Teacher of the Year, I can't wait to meet you. I wish you luck. We have to get you to the White House. I got the message right <laughs> over here. And um, I, I think that each and every one of you is really carrying a banner for all the other wonderful teachers in Maryland. We don't give enough credit, I think, in the media and elsewhere to the terrific job that teachers do. Remember, it is teachers that make every other profession possible. So. It's very special. So I just wanted to take a minute to, uh, to say what would be ahead for the Maryland teacher, not the Maryland, not only the Maryland, but for your cohort group of teachers of the year. Of course, the Maryland teacher of the year ends up winning all sorts of prizes, about $60,000 worth of prizes or more, a car, et cetera. But for every district teacher of the year, this is what the year is going to look like. Uh, first of all, you become a, an advisory committee to Lillian Lowry, the state superintendent. She totally loves the teachers of the year. She would love to meet with all of you, but it's difficult. So now she knows she's got your representation through your teacher of the year. And she really listens, and we meet um, four or five times a year, give her ideas. She brings it back to the State Department of Ed, and it really is very meaningful. She counts on you as her advisory team. This is also the 25th year of the gala, and I, it's hard to believe it, but it's my 25th year doing the Teacher of the Year program. I, I mean, I, where did the time go? I, I like to think I haven't changed that much, but probably <laughs> I have. Um, but so we're going to have an exciting gala um, at Martin's West. I hope lots of you will be able to, to come. And we're going to be offering a retreat to Smith Island for all the teachers of the year, a retreat to Western Maryland, like three days getting to know different areas in the state a cruise to St. Michael's. <laughs> Everyone was hoping, ooh, we might be going to the Caribbean. Uh, a po various policy conversations with elected officials and other leaders, honors on the floor of the House and the Senate uh, for all the teachers of the year and the Senator. And in Annapolis, you really are so respected. And, um, and, and loved, beloved, I have to tell you. So that's a wonderful feeling. A chance to mentor great students through the Teachers of Promise program. Recognition by the Walters Art Museum. Invitations to see the Ravens, the Orioles, and the University of Maryland Terps. 
which is lots of fun, various um, recognition dinners and ceremonies, monetary awards for every district, and many other gifts and prizes, so including conferences, et cetera. So it's a great, great, great year ahead to the one Prince George's County Teacher of the Year who will be taking over. I can't wait to meet you, and you'll join the wonderful group of teachers. But to everyone here in the room, you are all winners. We think the world of you at the State Department of Ed. Thank you for all that you do. Darla, again, congratulations on your silver anniversary with the Maryland Teacher of the Year program. That's just great. Darla, you were starting to sound like the host of The Price is Right up here. You had me going with that cruise. Oh, as Darla mentioned, our county executive made news this week. He was on all the channels up there in Boston. Who knew he was a marathoner? We're going to have to start calling you Marathon Man. Beantown Baker, how's that? Our county executive, Ruchern Baker, as many of you know, just completed in five hours, 54 minutes and 54 seconds, the Boston Marathon last Monday. Let's give him a hand. Of course, those of us who know him know that Mr. Baker can go the distance. Never flagging in his efforts to promote Prince George's County, our schools, and now the benefits of exercise by pounding the pavement. Mr. Baker has been a continual source of inspiration to us Prince Georgians during his two terms as county executive. And you know, if our county is a better place to live today, and it is, much of that credit goes to this role model, himself a teacher for the past five years. Of course, now that he's broken the tape in Boston and tasting a little bit of athletic glory, we'll probably be seeing a little less of you in the future. You know, uh, Kilimanjaro? The English Channel, maybe Everest. Stay tuned, everybody. Rushern Baker, our county executive. Welcome him, please. Either one. Okay. Don't you love Dave there? Is that on? Hello. Let's give Dave a round of applause. Isn't he great? <laughs> Giving his time to this county and to this. First of all, I want to uh, congratulate all of you who've been nominated. Um, you're not nervous, are you? It's a lot of prizes up here. It's a big, big thing. So I want to congratulate you. I also want to congratulate our past uh, Teacher of the Year. If we can give Laura another round of applause. <laughs> Certainly to our terrific school board, if we can give them a round of applause for the hard work that they're doing. Our uh, great uh, superintendent, Dr. Maxwell, who we took, from, we took back from Anne Arundel County. And on a personal note, um, you know, I have, as people who have spent any time with me, know that I have three young adults who still try to occupy my house. <laughs> and if you spent any time with me, you would think I actually went to Suitland High School, which I didn't. But all of my babies did. And there's one man who had the pleasure, and I'm sure he thinks about it every day, what a wonderful opportunity it was for him just to enjoy those three lovely individuals that still occupy my house. <laughs> Mr. Fawcett, who was their principal, can we give him a round of applause for surviving? <laughs> now, it, it, is, it is your day. It is your moment. It is your time. It is an opportunity for us to recognize the hard work that you do each and every day. The hard work that goes unnoticed most of the time by most people in this county, except for the very important people. And that is the child that you touch and the parents, grandparents that know it. Most of the five thousand square mile residents of this county may never get a chance to meet you. 
most of the nearly million residents of Prince George's County may never know your name. Most will never know that you were nominated for Teacher of the Year. Most, when they see you in the grocery store, may not know what you do. But that's not why you do it. You do it to change lives. I often tell this story that, and if you've ever been around me, you know I say it a lot, Sagoon knows it very well. I repeated the first and second grade. So I was always two years older than my peers because I had a problem reading. I was fine with that, but a 10th grade teacher was not fine with that. And even though my parents were great parents and made sure that I had every opportunity there was, and they worked with me, I was perfectly comfortable of picking a career to either play football, which unfortunately for me, I did not grow any taller than I am now. <laughs> I did gain more weight. Or maybe going into the military, which is a great noble profession where my father was. But it was Miss Lutz in 10th grade that made me read Black Boy. And once she did, it completely changed my life. It made me feel guilty, quite honestly, not because I had not, you know, you know, been given opportunities other kids were given. It made me feel guilty because I had been given more opportunities than I richly deserved. It made me feel guilty that I was occupying a seat in a classroom with great teachers and not taking advantage of it. And it also made me want to change other people's lives. Now, at Howard University, they wouldn't let me in the School of Education, so I had to go to School of History. <laughs> but it did make me want to go into public service. And I bring that up because over the last month or so, we've been going around this county, and we've been talking to people. And quite honestly, we've been talking about you. And what we said to people, and what I said to folks, and what Dr. Maxwell said to people, and what Dr. Eubanks said to people, was that we believe in the work that you're doing. We believe that you're worth 15 cents. That's right, one five. We believe that an additional 15 cents into our school system, adding $133 million into our school system so that you can take the great work you're doing and compete with everybody around the world. Now, I'm going to step off with this. So I got home from one of those meetings, <clears throat> and I looked like I had just run the Boston Marathon, which I had not. And one of my young adults who was occupying my house because she was not in New York said, Daddy, you look beat. I said, well, thank you, sweetie. See, you know, my hair was, the little bit I had was all flustered. Tie was all like this. And she said, well, well who were you wrestling? Yeah. I said, I was at a community meeting with the county council, talking about our schools. She said, that must have been some meeting. I said, well, sweetie, you know your daddy. But just as I was talking to my daughter, someone texted me this, and I'll leave with this. He said, keep up your fighting, keep up your fighting for the youth and community of Prince George's County. Education is not the filling of a pail, but it is the lighting of a fire. Every day, you light a fire. Every day, you change somebody's life. That is why it's just a small token for us to recognize your hard work. You represent the men and women who teach in your profession who are not here tonight and we love you for it.
God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Baker, for, for helping to light that fire and to sustain that fire. And uh, everyone is, is in your corner. Our next uh, speaker needs no introduction because he is someone very familiar to us. But I'm going to give him one anyhow. <laughs> He's not going to get away with that. You might have heard that they're bringing back some old classic TV shows. X-Files, Coach, Full House. They call them in the broadcasting industry comfort TV. Well, and that's a big reason, I think, why we like Kevin Maxwell, because he's familiar. You know, for the first time in almost 15 years, we've got a Prince George's native son as our superintendent. Someone who is thoroughly invested in who we are. No carpetbagger he, said a Channel 9 reporter the other night. Dr. Maxwell's Prince George's pedigree is very familiar to us. It's an arc that went from Bladensburg High School through a 20-year teaching career to the principalship at Northwestern High School. After stints in Montgomery and Anne Arundel County, as we well know, he came back to where his heart belongs and where he knows he can make a difference with our children. So while it's obviously different from the original TV show of the same name, it's nice that All in the Family is back on in Prince George's County in the person of Kevin Maxwell. Our CEO, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and I want to... I want to thank you for that applause, but I want to thank Dave. Dave does a great job, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, the weather, on the other hand, you know, we've had some good calls. We've had some not so good calls, but so um, I want to, uh, I, uh, I'm going to apologize in the beginning to my communications staff. Uh, they give me uh, nice notes and things to keep me on track. Uh, but as they are well aware, uh, I don't always follow them. So I'm going to start uh, sort of at the end and, and rearrange a few things and then um, perhaps not follow the script. So I want to. Um, I want to begin with a few thank yous because I don't want to forget them, right? I, I uh, you know, when you give remarks and things, you know, sometimes you come to the end and you have forgotten to make sure that you thank the people who you need to thank. So I want to thank, uh, and I know that we've already heard this a little bit from people, but uh, Birgit uh, Rivard and her colleagues from, from Communications, Human Resources, Teacher of the Year Committee, uh, everybody involved in making tonight a great success. Could we really give them a, a big round of applause? And I want to um, also uh, make sure, because um, I know uh, my, uh, my friend and colleague and, and our county leader, uh, Mr. Baker, uh, Rashern, mentioned uh, the board members a few minutes ago, and I know that when Dr. Eubanks was up here, he introduced some of them, but, you know, we're all in this as a team, and you are too, and so um, um, I'll come back to Mr. Baker in a minute, but uh, Dr. Eubanks with the board, the president of the board, Carolyn Boston, the vice chair of the board, Patricia Eubanks, uh, Lupe Grady, and uh, Sonia Williams has, has uh, arrived. She was coming, coming from uh, another uh, thing she needed to be at. Uh, they are awesome part of our team. Our board, our board deserves credit, a lot of credit, because they too have stepped up and they too have put a stake in the ground about the future of Prince George's County uh, and the work that you do and the needs of our children. I want to uh, 
recognize uh, my exec team. I have some members of my exec team here. I don't think they're quite all in the same place, but I know that I see my two awesome uh, deputy superintendents, uh, Dr. Monique Davis and Dr. Sean Joseph. They're, they're over here. They're not waving. I'm guessing they think you all know them, but that's them over there, you know. <laughs> Dr. Maritza Gonzalez, a fellow Terp, uh, and, and uh, just awesome member of the exec team working on uh, diversity uh, issues, particularly in the, the Latino community. And I see Cito Narcisse over there on the far side, I think. And Keisha Bullock, our communications, uh, our chief communications officer is over there. And I'm not sure I saw other members of the exec team. Uh, 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 Helen Coley, I apologize. They moved the balloons, though, so now I can, now I can see you. When I was up here a minute ago scanning, I didn't see you. Um, and I also want to recognize Ken Haynes, president of Teachers Association. <laughs> A little, a little known fact, when I, uh, when I, when I came back, um, it was quite an interesting coincidence for me that, that um, you know, you talk about, you know, how things kind of, you know, they go around, they come around, you know, kind of stuff. So I knew, I knew Lou um, uh, Robinson, you know, for many years with the Teacher Association and things, and, and, uh, and when I was in the process of coming back to find out uh, that my former colleague for eight years at Northwestern High School was, was uh, president of the Teachers Association it was just an added bonus uh, because we know each other and there's no like, you know, he, he, he's worked with me as a principal, I've worked with him as a, as a great AP teacher and, and so having that relationship really helps uh, move things ahead quickly. I also, I don't know all, uh, the representatives of all the, the business partners that helped uh, make this possible tonight, but I know that um, uh, Gil uh, Aragona from NTA Life is here tonight. I'd like him, him to uh, wave. And, and I want to tell you that my, uh, the, the team that was running this was coming up just a hair short uh, in, in getting this thing all together. And, and I understand that Gil uh, stepped up and said, do what you need to do and we'll take care of it. And that's awesome. Uh, I, know there's, I know there's one other visit, business uh, supporter here. But I don't know if there are others. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to her. Are there others of our visit representatives of businesses that sponsor? Well, I appreciate you know their sponsorship. So I also want to recognize Victoria Samuels, who's here from the credit union. Okay. Now let me tell you why I say that. Because I do. I, I you know I don't do this to embarrass her. I do this because it's the truth. I've been a member of the Educational Systems Federal Credit Union since 1978 when I started teaching the first time in Prince George's County. It's a long time. Don't try to do the math. Um, <laughs> but uh, they are awesome. And, and uh, I really appreciate not only the fact that, that uh, what, what little bit of money and my mortgage and my credit card and all that kind of stuff are all there. And so I need them to be successful, right? Because uh, I don't want them to call the mortgage or anything. Um, but they're great business partners, they're great partners in the community, and I, I just really appreciate uh, what they do for us as well. So for our other business partners, I don't know, but again, if we could give a round of applause to our business partners, they're doing a great job. And the rest of them are listed in your program. So, so that's sort of the business part, and I just wanted to get that out of the way so I didn't forget. So, so, so far, so good. She's nodding her head. She's like, okay, so far, so good. So, so this is, for me, uh, one of the most exciting nights in our calendar year, in our school calendar year. Uh, because as, as Mr. Baker said, uh, you represent, you know, you in your own right are outstanding teachers and you're being recognized for that. But you're representative of the great teaching and learning that goes on in Prince George's County every single day. And too often we are not recognized for the great teaching and learning that goes on. You would think when you talk to some people in our community and some some of our elected officials, uh, that we are a disaster in every classroom, in, on every day, in every school, in every community, and it is just simply not the case. You are doing a fabulous job. So you exemplify that fabulous job. You exemplify that greatness that is Prince George's County. 
every single day, every single hour, every single minute of that every day, you are making a difference with the children in our schools, for our schools, for our county, for our state. You have shaped lives. You inspire. You set our children on their individual paths to greatness. Thank you for that. As you know, it's time to put this away now. As you know, we recently released a strategic plan. That strategic plan is our roadmap to making sure that the great things that you do in your classrooms, in your schools, stretches to every classroom, in every school, for every child, every day. The title of that strategic plan is The Promise of 2020. And it is imperative that the growth that we saw last year is multiplied tenfold. It is important that we show people that what's going on in your classrooms, in your schools, for every child every day happens for every single child in every single classroom across our entire district. Because if that doesn't happen, then we can't be the great school district that I believe that we are. The potential that we have will not be realized unless we rise together to the challenges before us. Budget processes are interesting. And our part of that budget process includes, in our case at least, perhaps not everywhere, a real and sincere dialogue between the parties. I talk with the board about where we are, what we're thinking about. And in December of every year, so far, I've released a budget to the board. And both years so far, the board has looked at that budget. They have not, by any stretch of the imagination, used the proverbial rubber stamp and said, good job, we're right where we want to be. <laughs> Doesn't happen in my life, right? And that's a good thing. That's what we have a board for. That's why we have these great board members sitting right here, because they're part of a team. We're all part of a team. So last year, the board said, we got to do more in parent and community outreach. We got to do more with academics. What, what are the goals? Where are we headed? You know, we want to, we want to, you're working on your strategic plan. We want to outline the mission and vision for this school district and the core values. That's our job as governance. I have to tell you, it's great to have a board that says, we want part of this. We want in. We don't want to just critique you. We want in. We want to be a part of this this greatness that we seek. This year, you know, we were hearing the headwinds, we were hearing, you know, so we were talking about, well, I don't know, you know, it's going to be hard even to sustain some of what we're doing. And so we were very cautious when we first released the budget. And you know what the board said to me? You know what the county executive said to me? Curtis Valentine, on behalf of the board, I know they were all talking. And, and Mr. Baker, they all said, within days of each other, what does it really take to move the district forward? What does it really take to get us out of the bottom rung of the state of Maryland year after year and move us up to the top 10? What does it take? And so we pulled on some of those things that we'd been talking about before. We, we, we pulled some people together, some people from schools, some people from central office. And we gave them a plan that we believe will move this district forward. And the strategy teams, again, included people from schools, from different 
you know, pieces of central office, all of us working together. And we laid out a roadmap. We laid out a plan on how we're going to move academic achievement, on how we're going to improve uh, safe and supportive schools. And when I say we, again, I'm talking about that broader team, not just me and a couple people in the office somewhere. We, we talked about how we're going to improve community outreach, high-performing workforce, how we're going to improve our organizational effective. Those are five parts of the strategic plan. And I'm going to tell you why I bring it up in a couple minutes. So we went to the board. We said, here's what it takes, because that was the next step of the process. But I said, we can't do that without resources. We're all ready just to get the great improvement we got in year one with a graduation rate overall improvement of 2.47%, the highest percent of any district in the state of Maryland, highest we've ever been since they started measuring the cohort rate. And for other groups of children, it went up and even higher. Special education, 8.02%. It's unheard of. That's your work, the work that you did in your schools, in your communities, with your children. We saw the data last year. Ninth grade promotion rate, graduation rate, almost identical numbers within a decimal point. Graduation rate, I mean, ninth grade promotion rate went up over 4% across our district. Higher in some schools than others, but 4%. So if that translates to 4% in graduation rate in a couple more years, we're there. We're at the state average in a couple years. We're above the state average in a couple years if we maintain that pace. There are other things to point to, too, but it points to your great work. But to do that in a sustained way and to improve, improve our SAT rates, our SAT scores, our ACT scores, our PSAT scores, our dual enrollment numbers, right, to continue to improve graduation rates, all the other pieces of the holding us accountable part of the strategic plan, we have to have resources. So Mr. Baker, and I want to be really clear, I, I, don't, I don't have to vote for him for county executive again because it's, you know he, he, he was unopposed, he won in a landslide, he should have won in a landslide, and I'll just selfishly say, and I, I don't know if I've ever told him this before, but I voted with him every, I voted for him every time he ran. I don't mind voting for a ticket that doesn't win. I want to vote for the right ticket. And Mr. Baker is the right ticket. And I don't say that selfishly. I met him when I was a high school principal at Northwestern High School. He's working on the Leadership Academy at the University of Maryland. I was doing a lot of work with student leadership in those days. And we had a lot of great meetings uh, over at the University of Maryland. And, and I just really valued his intellect and the work that he was doing and, and the team uh, were doing over at, at Maryland. Um, and, he, and when he was out door knocking one day, he knocked on my door. My wife answered, oh, Nancy, where's Kevin? So I was out cutting the grass in the backyard, and, you know, you're not always looking your best, you know. And uh, so Rashern walks around to the backyard, and I'm sweating, and, you know, uh, you know I'm running for county executive. <laughs> Uh, you know, it was great. I voted for you that time, too. <laughs> and so, and if I could vote for you again, I would. Because we'd be a lot better off if Mr. Baker had been our county executive for, uh, you know, a little longer than he has already, because he's made great strides. And can you imagine if we'd made those great strides a decade ago? So, so I've been out. I've been out almost every night with our, our great county executive. And I haven't been out there because I have a single thing to get out of it, right? You know, I'm, I'm back home where I want to be. I'm doing this because I want to do it, not because I have to do it. I'm doing this not because I've got some other aspirations. You know, maybe I could be the superintendent in New York or something. I don't want to be the superintendent in New York. I want to be the CEO, the superintendent in Prince George's County. Since Sagoon's going to the White House, maybe he can get Barack Obama to come back another couple times. That'd be great. You know, he's been here a couple times uh, uh, in, in my short tenure so far, and, and we'd love to have him back a couple more times. It'd be fantastic. But we've been out 
to support you. We've been out because we admire the work that you're doing. We admire the dedication that you bring to the job, but we know that you need more support. We know that you need more help. We know that our children need more help. So we have a budget request to support our strategic plan that will do lots of things. So we hear from some of you, and sometimes I hear from many of you through, through Ken Haynes, about uh, facility issues, right? And uh, so this budget may sound like it's not important, but we think it's really important. A second shift of maintenance so that we hire uh, in each of the eight shops that we have over in maintenance, five more people in each of those shops, five more HVAC people, five more plumbers, five more electricians, right? Right on down the list. So that when children leave our schools, we have somebody that can go in after they leave that isn't just the day shift, but somebody could come in there from, you know, 3 to 11 or whatever and fix the things that broke during the day that they can't do while the kids are sitting in the desks in your classroom. It's critically important. You know how much, how much maintenance needs we have. And, and it's really important. But we have other things to help with the instruction and the understanding of our kids. They include um, things like, I won't go through the whole list. I don't have the book right in front of me, uh, but I'll go through some of it. It includes a literacy coach in every school to work with kids who are behind in reading and math, to work with them in reading, math, language, arts, science, social studies, wherever they happen to be on those skills so that they can make up those deficits that they have and get on track with what they need. It includes, because we know we have more kids that can do higher level work than are currently doing them, and we know that some parents don't want their kids to leave the neighborhood school and go to centers. So we're going to put a gifted specialist, a gifted coordinator, in every single elementary school in Prince George's County. It includes a digital literacy investment for iPads and Chromebooks for every child in third, fifth, and eighth grade. Because we know to show us the knowledge that they have that you've taught them on the park assessment, they've got to also be able to use the, the technology that the tests are given on. And we know we don't have enough of it. It includes some salary enhancements for our teachers. I know it's not the same as a trip to the White House. Two minutes? I'm being told to wrap it up. I got to go fast. <laughs> because we know that you should not be tempted to leave our district and go to other districts because you can make a little bit more money. And it's actually not a little bit more money. We know that. It's a lot of money. <laughs> we know, and we told the county council today, that if you started here and worked for 30 years, or you started in Montgomery County and worked for 30 years, that at the end of 30 years, you'd make $200,000 more next door. And that is not acceptable, ladies and gentlemen. It is the reason, it is the reason why since 2007, 2008 school year, we've had to replace 7,100 teachers in Prince George's County. And as I say to my colleagues in business, you couldn't even run your business, let alone be successful with that kind of turnover. And we're actually doing pretty darn good. We're just not yet great. So let me close, as I was asked to do, And say this, Mr. Baker's been saying it very well, and he's got a beautiful graph that shows it. Our county, the people in our county, 
me, I live in the county. Those of you, the rest of you, most of you, I think, live in the county. We're not investing in our schools at the rate that our neighbors are. And it has a direct impact on the outcomes in our school district. Montgomery County puts in almost 65% of its school system's money. We put in 35% of ours. So when people start talking about 15 cents on the property tax rate, right, that doesn't even bring us up anywhere near that. The most recent Washington area boards of education, not my organization, not Ken's organization, not your organization, the boards of education organization, says that we are $2,500 in an investment per child, $2,500 behind, to, get to, to be held to the same standard as neighboring Montgomery County, as an example. And they've got all the other districts in there, too. We're behind pretty much all of them. So let me close with this. And when I'm finished, it's my pleasure to introduce Laura Sheldon in case I forget. <laughs> let, let me be, be very clear about why I'm out with my county executive, whom, whom I, you can tell I admire very much. I'm out every night because I believe in the promise of 2020. I believe that we can leapfrog past the other districts I'm talking about. There's no reason we can't score better than Somerset County. Somerset County, Dorchester County, Caroline County, Garrett County. There's no reason that we can't get where we said we're going to get in five years. But we need the resources to do it. Because our children in Capitol Heights, in Temple Hills, in Laurel, in Bowie, in Hydesville, they're worth every penny that the children are worth in Bethesda, that they're worth in St. Michael's, that they're worth in Garrett County, that they're worth in Columbia. Our children are worth every penny of it. And you as our teachers are worth every penny that every teacher in Bethesda or Columbia or Talbot County or Garrett County or Wooster County are worth. You're worth every penny of it. So now I'm going to ask one. No, I'm not going to ask for an offering. I'm going to ask for a favor. I'm going to ask for a favor. I'm going to, fa I'm going to ask for a favor. Because I'm out with my county executive every night almost. Took a night off to come here. Caught a little flack for coming here on time, but that's okay. We need to all fight the good fight. It can't be two or three of us. It can't be five or ten of us. Every one of you that works in this county has a county council member. Every one of you that lives in this county has a county council member. So therefore, some of you have two. You need to call them. You need to write them. You need to email them. You need to stop them in the grocery store. And you need to tell them that we'll fulfill the promise. They need to fulfill theirs. And Mr. Haynes would like to see you on Tuesday night. Well, if we doubted Kevin Maxwell's passion that was put to rest tonight. Passion is everything. He is in our corner. And now that you have numbers dancing around in your head, let me bring up someone who is indeed priceless. Last year when she was running for Teacher of the Year, I had the pleasure to go down and watch her class. And you know, I interviewed one of her students in the hallway afterwards, and the young lady said, I don't even like school, but I come because I like Miss Shelton. To me, that said everything. She is a workhorse. She is a science teacher. She has a full schedule. This young lady who worked at a maximum security prison teaching prisoners before she came into our system here has a sensitivity to young people that is without peer. You know, Laura, one of my favorite TV shows is Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Tonight, it is going to be Last Year Tonight 
with you. You're going to share what it was like this past year. Ladies and gentlemen, our reigning Teacher of the Year, Laura Shelton. Come on up, Laura. Thank you, Mrs. Aaron, for that wonderful introduction. Um, I got a joke, okay. So I had to tell my joke. One of my students, I'm not clever enough, one of my kids gave me this joke. What did the cell say when his sister stepped on his foot? Mitosis. My y'all get it? Mitosis. <laughs> I'm going to tell Shalom that somebody got it. Very good. So one more time, let me say congratulations to all of the nominees. Somebody, one of you, this will be your charge next year um, to reflect on the year that was. So let me start off by saying that never in a million years did I think I would end up in a classroom. Yet just prior to this recognition, I was trying to figure out what else would I do if I wasn't teaching. Um, so this past year for me has been nothing but affirming and uplifting, not just to me personally, but to our profession as a whole. As I look back on this year, I reflect on a year of firsts. My first time tweeting, Albert. I only, I only made four tweets the entire year, but I did try. Uh, I'm a native New Yorker, but Prince George's County is my home. I've traveled to many parts of the state of Maryland I'd never been to before. Uh, my first time crabbing, I actually had to kiss a fish. My first TV interview, and Mr. Zarin, you look way better on TV than what I do, so I'm going to keep my day job. But um, continued use of the acronym FIRST means that this past year has inspired me to continue in this profession and find a way to reach scholars beyond my classroom. This past year was refreshing as I have a new energy and a renewed sense of purpose that will help carry me through this next phase or chapter of my career. I've shared these experiences with an incredible cohort of colleagues, both old and new. My new uh, Teacher of the Year colleagues, I have 23 of them from other counties across the state. They are all gifted and as passionate as Dr. Maxwell. And I have been honored and blessed to share this journey with them. But this past year was the unexpected outcome of 15 years of trial and error, blood, sweat, and tears, and uh, just a lot of hard work that had it not been for the seasoned veteran educators that I encountered when I first came into the classroom, one of whom is here with me tonight, Mr. Moore, um, I might not have persevered and stayed in the classroom. And so it is they who sowed into me wisdom, strategies into my career, and without their love and support, I, I just might not be here today, so I appreciate them. And again, of course, it is the thank yous. During the past year, I've heard the words thank you so many times, it is overwhelming. Not the words themselves, but the fact that it comes from legislators, uh, business community leaders, uh, educational leaders, and uh, the fact that there is a sense of genuine appreciation for what it is that we do. The manner in which appreciation is expressed stately and shown over and over, it has not just been heartwarming, but humbling. And finally, and most importantly, again, as a resident of Prince George's County, I am honored to have had this opportunity to represent gorgeous Prince George's County, Maryland, because we are indeed great by choice. Thank you. Was that short enough? All right. That was absolutely perfect. But I have to tell you, Laura, I stopped listening at mitosis. Come <laughs> on. Come on. <laughs> All right, you have been very patient, and you've been sitting there on pins and needles. It is your time. If you are a nominee, first of all, I want you to pick up your card on the table. You'll be bringing that up in just a few moments. And how many of you are here? I know a number of people have traveled from out of town to be here for the nominees tonight. If you're from out of town, could you stand up or wave so we know who you are? Thank you for being here tonight and supporting your friend or your relative. Should you want to come up and take a picture of your friend tonight, they're going to be standing here in the center with their escort and then walking down the steps and down the red carpet. So feel free to line up along the red carpet if you want to get a photo. We welcome that. All right. If you're 
Last name begins with B, as in Stephen Biller, up to K, as in Samantha Cornegay. We're going to ask you to line up next to my friend Laura Shelton over here. Come on down. Those of you, those of you that have initials from K, as in Laura Koronowski, to W, as in Kimberly Wilson, would you please line up next to me here? Please bring your cards with you. Let's give them a round of applause as we see our 16 nominees. Uh, our first nominee from Bowie High School, where she teaches art and escorted by her principal, Dr. Druana Bay. Would you please welcome Danielle Rittaller? Danielle, come on up. Danielle is from central Pennsylvania. She has been teaching with us for nine years. And some interesting thing is about her, she and her husband for the last six years have been restoring an old row home in Baltimore City. Uh, she is the proud mother of two-year-old Delaney, and she loves creative challenges. She likes to do interior design, drawing, painting, and if you need a tattoo, Danielle is your lady. She one time sassed a senator when she was young. Apparently when the senator at her dinner table said, what do you want to do, Danielle? She said, I'd like to be a teacher. He said, a teacher? Why would you want to be a teacher? And she came back and said, why did you want to be a senator? <laughs> Good for you. Ladies and gentlemen, Danielle Rittaller. All right, next we have from Beacon Heights Elementary School, Mr. Stephen Biller, escorted by his principal, Ms. Lynn Stu Stewie. So Ms. Stephen has uh, some interesting facts about Stephen. Um, he's taught for seven years, okay? He worked as a chef on yachts from the Bahamas to Alabama. Alaska, excuse me, Mr. Zarin. <laughs> um, he spent three summers in Alaska, yes, and he also worked on the Cassini satellite. And I'm trying to read a note here. It says he cares for students like no other teacher. That and you Steve, traveled to Europe three times? Yes. Excellent, wow. Okay, so that's, let's give another hand for Mr. Stephen Biller. And Steve has a physics degree, but oh, he sure is teaching does. in our elementary schools here. And Steve, the Cassini satellite that was involved in the exploration of Saturn, and he helped collect data for NASA. So a very accomplished man and a great chef, worked in a restaurant in Montgomery County and just built a new home in Clinton, Maryland. He's got a lot going for him. We're lucky wow. to have him. Steve. Wow. We introduced her before, and here she is, 34 years teaching. She still loves it. Laura Koronowski from John Hanson Montessori. Come on up, Laura. And Laura is escorted by Miss Katrina Pinder, her principal. She has been 13 years in Prince George's County, and I told her, I said, uh, I'm a Western Pennsylvanian too. She's from New Stanton, which is exit, old exit seven on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. She is a longtime associate of the Boy Scouts and the Cub Scouts. She taught climbing and rappelling at Boy Scout camp, was a Cub Scout camp director, and this lady back in 1981 received from the Women's Pilots Association the National Aviation Educator Award. She is indeed a pilot and does acrob aerobatics for fun. You do loop-to-loops in the sky. Teaching is not thrilling enough. All right. <laughs> Laura Taranowski, our next nominee. Congratulations. Next up, we have Ms. Pauline Brown. She's a sixth grade teacher at William Packer Elementary School, and she is accompanied by her principal, Dorothy Clowers. So Ms. Brown, um, some interesting facts about her. She says that uh, she is an Apple authorized foundations trainer, that she utilizes steam in her lessons and puts the children first. And this is kind of cool. She broke a cinder block with her bare hands and earned her first degree black belt in martial arts. Mm. You don't I would, mess be, with I would be very respectful of Miss Brown if she was my teacher. <laughs> and you know what, Laura? 
I read also about Pauline that she is involved in something called hippotherapy. You're with the Maryland Equestrian Association, and you work with young people with spina bifida and autism and put them on horses and give them an experience that helps them along. I think that's just tremendous what you do in the side. Thank you, Pauline. <laughs> Our next nominee hails from Benjamin Tasker Middle School, escorted tonight by Ingrid Johnson, her principal. Would you please welcome seventh grade reading and language arts teacher Dana Olfus. Dana, where is Dana's table? Come on, you can do better than that. Because mom is back there. Mom, I know you can do better. Let me tell you about Dana. Dana is a great teacher. We sat in her class, and she mesmerizes. She never doesn't smile. I don't think physically she can do that. Dana says she has a fear of heights. I don't think you were afraid of anything when you was watching you teach. Her dream vacation is to go to Hawaii, and she loves to research things on Pinterest. And any student who has her is very lucky indeed. Dana Olfus, thank you for being here tonight. Next up, we have Ms. Valerie Dent, escorted by her principal, Dr. Christy Holden, from Surrattsville High School. That would be that beautiful table with all the instruments on it, as Ms. Dent is the music department chair um, over at Surrattsville. Some facts about, interesting facts about her. She lived in Panama as a child. Uh, she considers herself a military brat, um, that her dad is retired Air Force. Uh, she attended... Uh, She's a product of Prince George's County Public Schools, Morningside Elementary, Patuxent Elementary, what was Sasser Junior High School, which is now the board, and Frederick Douglass High School. And she is also a former member of the Petersburg, Virginia Symphony Orchestra, Miss Valerie Dent. An accomplished musician, absolutely. 28 years. 28 years, wonderful. Thank you, Miss Valerie Dent. Congratulations, Valerie. Our next nominee from Tyak Academy, escorted by Dr. Sandra Carr, is Keisha Tate. Please welcome Keisha. Keisha. Keisha has a very interesting background. She has a business degree, a bachelor's degree in business. She has a master's, an MBA, and started out homeschooling her children and decided that really teaching was her passion. She's been at it for eight years, and she says that she's originally from New York. Technology applications are her hobby, and she likes to pin Pinterest and says that is her passion. That's a little alliteration there. Miss Keisha Tate, ladies and gentlemen, eight years teaching in Prince George's County. All right, next we have Miss Susan Holmes. I guess that's Judith P. Hoya Montessori over there. She is escorted by Ms. Tracy Spivey White, her principal. Ms. Holmes is a fourth and fifth grade math and science teacher, like we said at uh, Montessori, at Judith P. Hoya Montessori School. Some interesting facts about her, she was a cheerleader. <laughs> she married her high school sweetheart who played football. <laughs> and that she considers herself to be a closeted introvert. I find that hard to believe. <laughs> How can you be a cheerleader and be a closet I introvert? I mean, come on. You know what else, Laura? Yes. Uh, Susan is part of a missionary group, and you're going to Zimbabwe in June. Wow. She travels with her church, and she tells me that she wanted to be a hematologist until she realized she got sick at the sight of blood. Uh -huh. So she became a legal secretary and worked at the Pentagon and the CIA, and we're real lucky that she turned to teaching and she came to teach with us. Wow, Susan wonderful. Holmes, congratulations. <laughs> now, we like your table. You're making a lot of good noise over there. Let's see if Akakik Academy can do it for Kimberly Wilson. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. All right, that's just about enough. That's, that's, that's it. All right. This is a very formal affair. <laughs> 
Let me tell you about Kimberly Wilson. She's an eighth grade reading and language arts teacher. Judy Adams, her very proud principal, escorts her tonight. And Kimberly Wilson is down there at the ever-growing Akageek Academy. She is in a temporary, but there is nothing temporary about this young lady. She is the real thing. Her students come in there. They do not want to leave. Some interesting facts about her is uh, you're adventurous, Kimberly. You want to go hot air ballooning for your birthday? You want to go jet skiing? She plans to become a massage therapist. And one time she appeared on America's Most Wanted. Wow. <laughs> the question is, what did she do? Of course, I'm just making that last part up. Kimberly Wilson, congratulations. <laughs> All right, our next nominee is Ms. Nadine Gojan. We call her Miss G. From Walker Mill Middle School. And she is actually escorted tonight by her brother, Mr. Max Gojan. He came all the way from New York uh, to be with her tonight to escort her. But her principal, Ms. Nicole Clifton, is here, but she is also represented by two teachers. So she, we will be meeting her shortly. Some interesting facts about Ms. Gojan. She says she loves to bake, and I can attest to that. I used to work with her, so I've had samplings of her goods, um, her baked goods. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> she is working on writing a book. Let me forget this card. I know G. She's a fantabulous teacher. She's a cheerleading coach. She coached Kayla at Thurgood, Ms. Our, uh, Ms. Bostick's granddaughter over at Thurgood Marshall, um, and you know, she is aptly honored here tonight as one of our nominees for Teacher of the Year. Sixth grade science teacher at Walker Mill Middle School, Nadine Gajan. Thank you. Nadine, congratulations. <laughs> Laura, <laughs> Laura, uh, did, did Nadine bake any cookies for us tonight? Not today, not today. That would have helped, wouldn't it? It sure In the would've. selection. That's sugar, yes. that's sugar, you're right. That would have helped. We me. can be bribed. Yes. <laughs> Nadine, congratulations. Thank you. Our next honoree from Walker Mill Middle School, escorted by his principal, Dr. Nicole Clifton, Chuameka Wakori. And don't give me that look. I tried my best with your first name there. <laughs> he said, Mr. Zarin, you lived in Africa. You could do better than that. The W is silent there. Let me tell you about this young man, seventh grade reading and language arts teacher. Uh, He's one of five children. He loves sports, but never played in high school or college. He has a very wry sense of humor, he tells me. He loves country music. And like Tom Hanks in that 2004 movie, The Terminal, he too got stranded in an airport for two days. Poor guy. Nowadays, you could file suit and get money for that. He is a product of Prince George's County Public Schools, and his parents immigrated from Nigeria, and he has been with us all the way as a student and now as a teacher, and we are lucky to have him. He's one of the two guys tonight pulling for you. Congratulations. Our next nominee is Ms. Michelle Campbell from James E. Duckworth Regional Center. She is a special education teacher and she is escorted by Mr. J. Bass. And a very special young lady. <laughs> All right. And as I outlined here, she says that she has an amazing family. Her favorite, um, okay, her favorite sport is caving caving and just being active. So I guess they get out and they're exploring caves. Her first, pa her first passion, she said, Mr. Zarin, was she wanted to be a neurosurgeon. Mm. But I think that what she's doing at uh, the Duckworth Center is, is way more valuable as you know, the impact will be felt for years to come. Thank you again, Ms. Michelle Campbell. Michelle, before you leave the stage, what's your daughter's name? Jada. Jada. She has been having a great time here tonight. <laughs> And, you know, I looked up because she wrote that she was a spelunker. And I thought, what? A spel that is a, the official name for caving. I think oh. that's just great. And she and her family volunteer at a soup kitchen and have done that together for five years. What a great family you have. What a great honor. Thanks for being here. And Jay Bass himself 
was a nominee for Teacher of the Year last year. Jake, congratulations oh, to you, too. Oh, wonderful. Our next nominee hails from Tulip Grove Elementary, and I know you can make some noise. Principal Jamie Whitfield Coffin is escorting Renee Roth, a third grade teacher. And Renee is, uh, she's been teaching longer in this county than anybody else here tonight. Laura Karanowski has 34 years, but Renee has been with us for 30 years here in Prince George's schools. Some interesting things about her. Uh, Back in 2005, she took her church's youth group to New Orleans to help clean up after Hurricane Katrina. Then in 2013, it was a much more pleasant trip because she says, you know, I've turned into a sports junkie. I can't get enough of the Ravens and the Orioles. So the once-in-a-lifetime trip for Renee and her family was to see the Ravens win Super Bowl 47. And you, when, you, when you go in Renee's classroom, everywhere you look, there's something on the wall of significance. But the thing that got my eye first was that big Ravens flag next to the window. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she is a sports nut, and she is also the biggest fan that young kids have there at Tulip Grove. They're lucky to have her. Renee Roth, ladies and gentlemen. Next, from Fort Washington Forest Elementary, we have Ms. Brenda Durant, escorted by her principal, Mr. Ezekiel Blois. All righty. You know what, Laura, that sounded like at the Olympics. Remember in South Africa, those Zuelas or whatever they were? Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Ms. Durant is a fourth grade math and science teacher. And she says that education was her second career. She's taught in two states, New York and Maryland, and she is a first-time grandmother. That's wonderful, yes. And I think that's, Mr. Zarin, that's, I think that's all I have for Mr. She told Rand. me that she was a business major, and Brenda at one time was an accountant. And I like what she said. When people would ask her as a child what she wanted to be, she told them in this order. Princess nurse, doctor, teacher, and fairy. I like that. <laughs> I am glad teacher one odd, Brenda. Congratulations to you. <laughs> Laura, we're almost to the end of our nominees here. I have just one on my side left. Would you please welcome from Imagine Andrews Public Charter School, Miss Erin Nauman, fourth grade math and science teacher. And her son, Orion, is sitting back there. I said, are you named for a constellation? And I think he said yes. Aaron is escorted by Mr. Rice, the principal. Uh, Mrs. Rice? She said, Mr. Zarin, if you looked at the card, Mr. Rice's name is crossed out, and it says Paris Carter. Patrice Carter, the assistant principal. My apologies. <laughs> Even with my glasses on, I have no excuse. <laughs> All right, Erin's a fourth grade teacher, and she has a very interesting life. She hails, like Danielle, from Pennsylvania. She's from Allentown. She is known as the box top queen at Andrews Public Charter because she has raised over $6,000 with box tops that is not too shabby. She ran her first half marathon in April 2013. Maybe you can talk to the county executive, run with him next time. And she is a huge fan of the Washington Capitals. And I have to ask you, have you had the game on back there? Two to one. Two to one? <laughs> Thank you. How did I know that you knew that? Aaron, congratulations. Good to have you here tonight. And Mr. Zarin, I, I love that I can speak to the talent that is represented in this room. Ms. Nauman was my daughter's uh, teacher, yes, fourth grade, when she was at Imagine Andrews a couple of years ago. That's wonderful. Yes. That is, thanks for sharing that, Laura. Do we have one last nominee? Last but not least, Ms. Samantha Cornegay from Allenwood Elementary School. 
and her principal, Ms. Shauna Fubui. So some interesting facts about Ms. Cornegay is she grew up in Prince George's County. Uh, she loves to sing with her scholars. She says, but she can't carry a tune. She loves to sing, but she can't carry a tune. And also, she is a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. Is there a pattern? Educators yes. learning yes. to defend themselves? <laughs> I don't know. But that would be Miss Samantha Cornegay. And you know, she also said, I know what Taekwondo is, but you also have a second degree black belt in Hop Ki Do. I have no idea what that means, but we will not mess with you, <laughs> Samantha. And you know, she has been, as I mentioned earlier, 23 years in the wow. very same school in the community where she grew up. Wow. She is an institution, folks. Samantha Cornegay, congratulations to you. <laughs> Laura, now it is time to let everybody know who the four teachers of that very esteemed group will be our finalists. Four teachers are finalists in this year's competition. All of them, as you just heard, are masterful at what they do. All are adored by the children they teach. And you know, they're all the kinds of teachers that we wish we had had when we were in school. There may be, and likely are, other teachers out there who are equal to our gifted quartet, but there can be none better. We're about to lower the lights and show you a video. Let's meet this year's finalists. Here are the four finalists for this year's Prince George's County Teacher of the Year. First, from Tulip Grove Elementary School, Renee Roth. Close your eyes. While her students may close their eyes to pick a color, it is never to wish for a better teacher than the one they already have. Patient, caring, and organized to a fault, Renee Roth has honed her craft over 17 years at Tulip Grove and a total of 30 in Prince George's County Public Schools. And if her students adore her, and they do, and her classroom is a source of stimulation wherever you look, it is because Renee knows exactly where she's going and what it takes to get there. I do like things to be very structured and orderly, and I think that's important at this age. They know what to expect when they come to school. Um, and I spend the first few weeks of school repeating those, practicing, going over it. Now we're going to do this, now we do. So by now, it almost looks automatic but it didn't come, you know, <laughs> it wasn't like this at the beginning. Exactly. But I tried to tell that to when I've had interns too. It's not magic. You have to work at it, you have to model for them, you have to be respectful th to them, and you teach them how to have a conversation. To encourage those conversations, Renee set up a series of stations recently, a carousel if you will, to elicit from her third grade readers their understanding of a character named Loji a young Indian boy who comes to America and finds friends hard to come by. As Loji discovers new American phrases like holy smokes and has strange encounters with farm animals, Renee's students found their own world widening right along with Loji. Why is it so funny that he kissed the pig? Why did people think that was so funny? Because he's so okay. Why is it so funny that he was, I think that's kind of gross, that milk was squirting out of his nose. Why did people think that it so funny? I don't know, but I think it's gross. I mean, if you were a girl, you would think it's gross. Maybe that's because you're If Loji experienced some alienation when coming to America, so too did Renee on her arrival in Washington from her native Wisconsin. Starting her career at Berkshire Elementary, Renee was lucky to find a mentor and friend who helped smooth the way and is still her biggest fan. When I look at Renee and I look at me, we kind of one person together. We have the same view when it comes to a child and Renee's view is it's all about the children. So if I had a child young, which my children are not, I would put them in Renee's room. She could always teach my children. She could teach any child, but she could always have mine because I know she's going to do right by them, and I know she's going to give them all of her. She's just a jewel. Anybody who has her will be lucky to have her. 
returning the favor many times over. Renee, who also teaches education courses at Bowie State University, has mentored new teachers at Tulip Grove, even if they are Steelers fans, and Renee decidedly is not. Actually, when I first came here, they made me feel very welcome by putting a sign, no Steelers, on my door. So. <laughs> and you still stayed. I still stayed. I have such a great team. Mrs. Roth is amazing. She had the awesome advice, actually, to write down a high from every single day. So when I go home at night and I reflect, I write down something that's special, something that really happened that was good. And that was her idea because when I'm having a bad day, I can look at that wall of all those post-its from every day and remember all the good things that happened. Mesmerizing though she may be, Renee's appeal apparently has limits because for at least one student, Cutting the apron strings is just how it's got to be. What do you really look forward to? Um, I look forward to the, the work and the hard work because I want to go to fourth grade. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's guaranteed. You're headed to fourth grade. Would you like to have Miss Roth in the fourth grade as well? Yes. How about the fifth grade? Sure. How about, let's go for broke. Would you have her in the sixth grade too? Um, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> that's Renee Roth prime candidate for teacher of one or two years, but maybe not a lifetime. Our next nominee, from Benjamin Tasker Middle School, Dana Olfus. Hey, auntie. <laughs> hey, auntie. If there is a more beloved teacher at Benjamin Tasker Middle than Auntie Dana Olfus, they had better have a recount for this would-be pediatrician who went through the resident teacher program and is now a 10-year teaching veteran, there is no mistaking her signature smile and genuine affection for all those around her. She finds the positive in everything. Is that the way it is all the time? That's exactly how it is. No matter how bad you feel like you did, she'll always find a way to make you feel like you did good. She is somebody who always has a smile on her face. She is always willing to lend a helping hand. She's always willing to really do anything. Um, that's one thing I admire about her is her attitude. She really has a heart for this. Uh, when I, I can come to her and ask for ideas, and I'm the college prep teacher. She's reading language arts, and she's always trying to do whatever it is that best suits the student. With her skill at promoting student achievement, it is no surprise that Dana, a seventh grade language arts teacher, taught a lesson recently on the power of advertising, something she does for her profession each and every day. And this is the ad that we made that is targeted to kids, the presenting the Mercedes Benz Child Edition. I love your presentation. I love the fact that you do have a symbol to represent your product and the kid the stylish kid behind to show us that it was flipped and now it is it went from being for adults to kids. While pitching a Mercedes to a child is a tough sell, the challenge of reworking ads for different audiences brought out student creativity that included a few theatrics. 99.9% .9 approved by doctors to end your child's crying. A student told me uh, they went home after the, our opening lesson and they went home and talked to their family about, you hear that commercial? That's not for me. That's for you. And would you pay attention to it? So I really think it's helpful for them because it helps them as they grow up to think about what are the things that I'm purchasing in it and are they needs? Are they wants? Asked what it takes to teach every day with the kind of anticipation and joy she exudes. Dana's reflections are the perfect recruitment for those considering the classroom as a profession. Come into it with an open heart because you pour your heart into everything that you do. And in education, it's not about you, but it is about the students that you service. And as long as you know that, you're going to enjoy getting up every, every single morning. I come in here every day. My, my husband told me I come in here like I'm a new teacher every single day because it's a new journey every single day. For her students, some of whom sit in even when they've moved on to the eighth grade, Dana Olfus is the ideal product, a unique mix of comfort and capability who's been advertised by the best method ever, word of mouth.
And not many people liked her. She's an, practically an internal optimist. Mm. You rarely see those nowadays. She really is a real model for a, the perfect teacher, although I don't want to hear her saying that. <laughs> Why not? Well, because it, I don't want to sound like I don't want to sound like being like favoritism. Because I like I like all the teachers here. They all seem to have a, a very good idea of what they're doing. But honestly, I think Mrs. Zoltz has a real grip on what she's doing, and that she shouldn't. And she really should deserve that award. To me, Mrs. Olfis is the type of person that when I get out of bed this morning feeling like I didn't have enough sleep the night before, I can say to myself, you know what? I have Miss Olfis's class to look forward to. I get to come and see her every day. So let's change that commercial for orange juice and make it say that a day without Dana Olfis is a day without sunshine. Finalist number three, from Akakik Academy, Kimberly Wilson. What do you get when you cross a pig with a dinosaur? Uh, it was... Jurassic Pork! Jurassic Pork, pork yeah. <laughs> Delivering bad puns like Jurassic Pork, or how about a flashlight with dead batteries not being sad but delighted? How could students not wince and enjoy Kimberly Wilson's seventh grade language arts class at Akakik Academy? And while they and we know that she has no hope for a career as a stand-up comic, Kimberly thinks otherwise. Great way to start the class. It helps to relax the atmosphere and break up any tension. And then whatever they're thinking about, they get rid of, because my jokes are so great. <laughs> I'm supposed to like to do these puns up, or these jokes that's up on a board. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they're a little corny, but it's funny, because the way she explains it to us, and then a lot of people don't laugh, but we laugh, we're laughing like at what she said. While her humor may be questionable, it's no joke that Kimberly Wilson is a masterful teacher. This graduate of Oxon Hill High School, who always dreamed of being a teacher, has been living that dream for the past 16 years. A teacher trainer for the National Education Association and an in-house resource to all at Akakik, the Honorable Miss Wilson is widely revered as an emissary for the profession and the very reason some of her colleagues actually came to the school. She's sort of a, our ambassador teaching around here. She's so high energy, she's uh, involved with her students, and more importantly, she loves to teach and she loves the kids. With a daughter who's biracial, and the kind of topics that Miss Wilson would present in class through her literature, um, and not just diversity in race, but diversity with um, educational abilities, um, with social and economic kind of backgrounds, I really think that the kind of things that my daughter would come home telling me were just that she felt welcomed and she felt like Miss Wilson understood. And it was one of the reasons that made me want to come teach here uh, because I knew I'd have her as a colleague. Watching Kimberly Wilson teach is to see students taking responsibility for their own learning. Guiding her students through Ray Bradbury's disquieting book about a future society that lives only to watch TV, her approach was anything but pedestrian, the title of Bradbury's book. In small groups and with Chromebooks at the ready, students looked for symbols in the writing and got Miss Wilson's encouragement when they found them. He has yellow lights coming out of his house. When you all think about the color yellow and yellow lights, what do you think about? Warmth, the sun, brightness. Again, representing humanity, right? I'm giving you all your answers. Okay, see what else y'all can find in there. I need them to understand that analytical thinking and problem solving and critical thinking and doing things that are against the status quo and understanding that everything that's in writing does not make it accurate. They need to think and not just be lambs led. Mm -hmm. So I need them to take all that they get and be able to apply it to a good, fruitful life. Mm -hmm. So that's my goal every day. With her passion for teaching and learning, it is small wonder that many of her students see Kimberly Wilson as much more than an accomplished teacher. She lifts me up. Like, if I feel like I'm going to quit something or if I feel like I'm doing something wrong, she lets me know that it's okay to make mistakes. And she's just, one. she's a role model. Like, you want to be like her. People are watching everything that we do, and we need to embody character education, we need to embody professionalism, and we need to remember that our product could really change the world and we can't take it lightly. Unless, of course, she's telling the one about the English teacher who had to give up on the apostrophe because it just got too possessive. 
Nudge, nudge. That's Kimberly Wilson laughing all the way to excellence. And now, our last finalist, Allenwood Elementary, Samantha Cornegay. Go ahead and measure. I'm gonna keep her just like this. She won't move. Mm-hmm, she'll be fine. From tail to toe, she's what? 15 and a half inches long. If right. ever there was a surefire so STEM lesson guaranteed to engage sure students, it is designing a bigger high. hutch for and Peter he, Cottontail. He, <laughs> the rabbit, whose real name is actually okay. Daisy, has lived happily among Samantha Cornegay's students at Allenwood Elementary for the past sure year. And while Daisy hasn't complained about a lack of space, the rabbit condo task let children use jelly beans, naturally, and toothpicks to model Daisy's new digs. Did I say you have to make sure the toothpick represents what? A measurement. A measurement. And you, everybody has to decide what that measurement is going to be. Because when you go back and talk about the area, you have to know how much it is. Having grown up in the very same Temple Hills neighborhood where she has now taught for 23 years, making pet rabbits and children feel at home just comes naturally to Samantha. This esteemed math teacher, sought out for advice by every other staff member at Allenwood, including the principal, is carrying on a family tradition. Her dad, the best math teacher ever, she avers, taught in the D.C. public schools for 30 years and inspires her still. Samantha, in turn, is inspiring new generations of potential professors, some of whom are now her biggest fans as she vies for teaching's biggest prize. We're here because Ms. Cornegay is a candidate for Teacher of the Year. Of she, the Year? She, she likes t telling us that. <laughs> she wants to bond with us so that so that it feels like she's our mom, our second mom. And sometimes I actually mistake her for my real mom. They're sincere. We're um, honest with each other. When, we not, when things aren't right, they tell me. When they don't understand something, we try to fix it. And we all work together as a team. There's no one person that is left out. Everybody works together. And we all just, you know, one big happy family in there. After school, they don't want to leave. You know, they always ask, are we going to have tutoring today? And, you know, so, yeah, we're going to have tutoring. And they just never want to leave. When asked about her worthiness for Teacher of the Year, Samantha's principal feels she's worth an even grander title. Is she the Teacher of the Year, Shauna? Ms. Cornegay is the Teacher of the Century, okay? She's been teaching for in excess of 23 years, and she continues to rejuvenate. She continues to stay current. Right. But for all well, Samantha's mathematical and creative and teaching skills, what likely endears her most to her students was shyly revealed by a young lady when asked about the most fun in Mrs. Cornegay's class. The most fun we've had is when she lets us sing, dance, and rap. Does she sing and rap with you? Yes. You think she'd do that for us if we asked her today? Yes. Does she like to do that? Yes. <laughs> so, natural-born performer and former dancer that she is, Mrs. Cornegay hit it, and even the bunny was thumping along. I look into your eyes to see what you are thinking. That answer's wrong. I gotta sink it. I tell all of you like I told all of them. This work ain't hard. It's just paper thin. Word. That's rabbit keeper, rap leader, and rock star, Samantha Cornegay. Once again, our four finalists, Renee Roth, Dana Olfus, Kimberly Wilson, and Samantha Cornegay. All right, could we have our four finalists please come up the red carpet and join us on stage? <laughs> Dr. Maxwell and Dr. Eubanks, could you join us as well at that podium?
They did this at the Emmy Awards. Remember, all the nominees came up and were congratulating each other. Congratulations to all four of you. You are all... I, it was very difficult picking a winner here. And uh, at this time, Dr. Eubanks is going to reveal which of the four of you is the runner-up in this year's competition. Again, what an honor and a pleasure <laughs> to be among you outstanding educators, the runner-up for the 2015 Prince George's County Teacher of the Year is Dana Olfus. <laughs> and Sherelle Stagg is up here with Laura passing out some of the trophies and the marks of our appreciation to Dana. And now, the announcement of the 2015 Prince George's County Teacher of the Year. And as we were saying earlier, we fully expect you to become the Maryland Teacher of the Year. And we want to see you at the White House as the first ever Prince George's County Teacher who is the National Teacher of the Year. No pressure. <laughs> Dr. Maxwell, our winner. No pressure at all, right? So listen, I uh, have a... No. <laughs> the 2015 Prince George's County Teacher of the Year winner is... Renee Roth from Tim Tul Tulip Grove. We're going to give Renee a chance to collect her thoughts before we ask to hear from her. And Renee, you gave such a wonderful speech at the interview, and I know we're looking forward to what you have to say. Let me tell you what she and all of you have won tonight as she is organizing her thoughts. All 16 of our nominees are taking home very nice travel packages that includes luggage, tote bags, and all provided by the Educational Systems Federal Credit Union. Our four finalists are getting $500 in classroom funds. The Mall at Prince George's is giving you a gift bag with $25 gift certificates. You get a spinner suitcase and you get a $25 gift card from the Educational Systems Federal Credit Union. I feel like I'm Oprah Winfrey up here with all the favorite things. Our runner-up, in addition to all of those other prizes, Dana, you are taking home a $100 gift card from Wegmans and a $50 gift card from the Educational Systems Federal Credit Union. Excellent. And additionally, to all of that, Renee is taking home $1,000 in classroom money supplies to take back to Tulip Grove, a 25-inch Traveler's Choice Spinner suitcase, a ticket on Southwest Airlines, an overnight stay at the Gaylord with a restaurant meal included and a $100 gift certificate from the Educational Systems Federal Credit Union. And Renee, we have something very special for you. Gil Aragona, who went to our schools and now represents National NTA Life, National Teacher Associates. Not only did he help bankroll tonight's ceremony, but he has something for you that I think you'll like. Gil? On behalf of NTA Life and all its employees, we'd like to present you with this widescreen TV right behind you. So you've got the suitcase, you've got the tickets, you've got the entertainment. All of this brought to us courtesy of all those wonderful sponsors you see in your program. Vic Samuels over there from the Educational Systems Federal Credit Union. Yeah. Cheryl Landis, the Excellence in Education Foundation. The Mall at Prince George's, Wegmans, Martins, Mark Resnick. Mark, you always do a great job for us here. 
uh, specialties and Gaylord National uh, and, of course, NTA and Gil Aragona. It has been a wonderful night, ladies and gentlemen. What a fitting way to conclude hearing the words of our new Teacher of the Year, Renee Roth. Renee. Oh. didn't prepare a speech. I just, um, if you were a group of children, I would have more than enough words to say. Um, first, I want to thank my Lord with whom all things are possible. Um, and when I went for the interview, the first question was, why should you be Teacher of the Year? And my immediate thought was, well, I probably shouldn't be. Um, I didn't say that, but I thought back over my 30 years here in Prince George's County and all the teachers that I have worked with, that I have met, that I have sat on committees with, all the parents, all the children, some of which now are teachers, and just all the people who have contributed to who I am today, from Carletta Richardson, who my very first year as this young woman from Wisconsin, I was told by my principal, Mrs. Richardson will take care of you, and she did, and she continues to my newest teammates and all the friends I've made at Tulip Grove. I have a little piece, I think, of almost every single teacher in Prince George's County in me, and I thank you for letting me represent you. All the people that were here tonight, you are all more than deserving, and I hope that I can represent you and do as well as our teachers in the past have done, and I know I'm going to be looking to all of you for a lot of guidance. <laughs> um, so thank you very much. This is a wonderful, um, Recognition, thank you to my husband and son for putting up with me all these years. And they found out when I moved, we're in a temporary building at um, Tulip Grove right now, and when I moved this past year, they helped me, and they, um, my issues with school supplies was uncovered. So I have been banned from buying school supplies, but I don't know, I have $1,000 now. So. <laughs> so thank you to everyone. Thank you so much. And Renee Miller, we're going to have to contact the Ravens, maybe at the next home game at M&T Bank Stadium. They can put something up on the board for you. Teacher of the Year, returning the favor. Before we let you go, our round table, our former Teachers of the Year are waiting over here. They're all smiling to welcome you to this wonderful group, and they have a special gift for you as well. Ebony? Good evening, everyone. My name is Ebony Cross Shields, 2009 Teacher of the Year. Good evening, my name is Albert Lewis, 2013 Teacher of the Year. Good evening, my name is Rayshawna Bowman, 2011 Teacher of the Year. Good evening, everyone, Sherelle Stagg, 2012 Teacher of the Year. And we just wanted to take an opportunity to welcome you to the Teacher of the Year Roundtable. We are the only school system that has such a thing because we do embody the spirit of, and the importance of once a teacher of the year, always a teacher of the year, we thought it was important to consistently give back. And so two years ago, we developed the concept of the teacher of the year roundtable. And so tonight, on behalf of the teacher of the year roundtable, we have a few gifts for you. Because as you know, teaching truly is a work of the heart we are presenting you with a sterling silver engraved heart chain. As well, we know that teachers are constantly writing those lesson plans, and we know that you consistently are having your students writing with rigorous prompts in your classrooms. We have this pen here today that is inscripted, Teacher of the Year 2015 for you today. We have this nameplate for you, which reads Mrs. Renee Raw, 2015 Teacher of the Year, so that everyone recognizes just how special you really are. I guess it's been two years ago, uh, the tradition was begun that the outgoing Teacher of the Year would offer a few words of encouragement to the incoming Teacher of the Year, along with my cell number. So. This is for you.
Thank you, Roundtable. Renee, welcome to that very special club. We're very proud of you, and we hope this was a special evening for you and your family and all the people at Tulip Grove. And I help, hope all of you, all 16 nominees and all of the friends and family here tonight, I hope you appreciate what very special people are sitting at your tables. I hope you had a good time. Drive safely, and good night. <laughs>